Hi guys, it's Allie with Chaos Monkey. And I am doing a finish video for the Kelly's um, Knit Club from Alpaca Direct for November. So this was November's club. And the yarn was in... But the yarn was in uh, Coeur d'Alene Yarn Superwash Merino. And it was in two colors. It was in the grape and the pansy colorway. And this is all I had left for that. So um, I can't find my scale or I'd measure them for you, but it's probably only like a couple of ounces barely left of both colors. And this was the pattern. And I will... Oh, geez. I spilled coffee all over everything a couple of days ago, so I don't want to show the back because I ended up spilling coffee all over it. Luckily, I was already finished with it. Um, but here is the finish. It is a cowl. So it's the Harmony Mosaic Cowl. I should probably tell you the name. And that's really the only good picture in the, um, in the thing that uh, we have. So um, there's no other good pictures inside. But the thing is, is that Kelly does her own videos and she has, she shows you everything in detail. So don't, you know, don't worry if you're in the club or you're thinking about joining the club, there's plenty of um, videos, walkthroughs, the whole deal to see the whole thing. But you can see the whole thing. She also does an unboxing video and shows the pattern too on her own channel. So I apologize. There is, I'm going to shake this out. There's a little bit of cat hair on there, so I'm going to get that off real quick. But here is the cowl. And you start off with a tubular cast on. And that's what this looks like right here. And I'm filming this on a different camera, so I'm really hoping that it comes out because I can't quite see on the viewfinder the way I normally can. And then just as a note, this, uh, this end is not done in the tubular bind off. So I was gonna try to show you the difference. Here's the tubular cast on, and then here's a regular bind off, a regular stretchy bind off. Um, yeah, I didn't want to do the tubular bind off because it involves the Kitchener stitch, and I knew I would goof it up on something this big in circumference. I just didn't have the brain space to know that I could get through it without messing it up. So I just did a stretchy bind off on the bottom, but you can definitely see the difference in the, this, the way that the that it looks. If I had done the tubular bind off, it would have matched this part right here. So, but I'm going to wear it from top down. So this part, it actually works out because it just kind of lays a little flatter against your chest. And this part will kind of roll in a little bit more in your neck area because of the tubular. So it's just, you know, I just knew my limitations. I knew I'd screw this up. So I just didn't bother. I just did a regular one, but I haven't done a tubular cast on in a long time. So um, it was a really good refresher for sure, and it's very, very stretchy. If you can't see the whole stretch here, um, I did a stretchy bind off. This is like the Russian bind off here. The tubular is stretchier, as you can see. They're starting at the same part here, but look how much stretchier the tubular is. So They're both stretchy, but the tubular is definitely more stretchy. So you do the tubular cast on, you do your ribbing, and then you work this stitch pattern, which is like a ripple stitch, which was a lot of fun. Hope you can see that good. And then there was a chain stitch. And then this was like a mosaic knitting, which was a lot of fun. And then you repeat all the way down. And then you do the tubular bind off, except I didn't. I did the uh, stretchy Russian, but only because I knew I'd mess up the Kitchener. I can do Kitchener in small amounts, like 24 stitches, like on the toe of a sock. But anything where you do this many stitches, I knew I was going to goof it. So, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love the yarn. It's already been washed and blocked. Um, and it, the stitch definition is really, really pretty. Um, and I really liked the yarn is nice and soft and squishy. Um, yeah, the only part is, is when I did my tubular a cast on I messed up and jogged a little bit when I worked in the round so I kind of had to kind of fill it in to try to fix it and you can definitely see where I messed it up so if you see that that's my fault I didn't want to rip out the tubular after I started it and I just tried to patch it because I had a big jog because I think when I was pulling the stitches up to because um, you pull a stitch below and pull it up onto the needle when you do the tubular 
I think I pulled it from the wrong spot because I kind of had to make an extra stitch. I was a stitch short. And when I did that, I think I made a huge jog. So I kind of had to fill it in with the scrap, with the end yarn. And I didn't do the best job. So, but anyway, you'd never see it if I didn't pull it, point it out. <laughs> but that's the only thing is that I kind of goofed there, but you really can't see it unless I really point it out. And you'd never see it if you were wearing it. And I think that was it. I don't think I messed up anything else. I think I might have put an extra row on one of these sections of just the plain knitting rows. But again, you'll never see it. You'll never know. And when you're wearing it, it's going to be all nice and bunched. So, um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to make. It was fairly quick. I think I did it in two days. Um, yeah, pretty much in two days. I think two evenings, I should say. I really do like the tubular dust, so I do want to start using it on more things. I'm actually doing it on a sweater, so, um, yeah. So hopefully this video turns out, because I'm doing it on my other camera, and it's a little wonky on the lighting and the focus, so, plus the sound is a little weird too. It, it doesn't record sound as loud as my other camera, so if any issues, I'm still going to put it up, but apologies ahead of time if it's not great. So, and this has been washed and blocked. All I did was soak it in some warm water with some wool wash and laid it flat to dry and then just rotated it every once in a while like this so that you didn't get the line. Um, cause if you let it just dry, it'll in one spot, it'll make a line and that's no big, you know, you, when you wear it, it'll probably come out, but that's all I did to block it. You don't need to pin it or anything like that cause you want to keep it nice and squishy. And you can see that the mosaic pulls it in a little bit at the neck, but not too much. It's all still super cool. And you can see with the mosaic knitting, um, it's really simple. You're just working with one color at a time. So don't let it like intimidate you if you haven't done that stitch. It's just, you just slip a stitch on one row, knit it on the next. So like two rows, you work in each color and one slipped, as you can kind of see the slip stitch. And it creates this really cool pattern. So really nice, really easy. The chain stitch is easy. The ripple pattern is easy, but you have to be careful that you don't miss a stitch because you can't use stitch markers on here because it moves around too much. But it's pretty short rounds, so if you can keep track pretty well. Just don't put it down in the middle of a round, and you'll probably be fine. And so, yeah, a lot of fun. Really soft, squishy. Really looking forward to wearing it. And uh, I've been in Kelly's Knit Club since uh, June. I think. And out of six projects, um, I've made four out of six and I've loved them all. And most of them are designed by Kelly. So, um, I do have a link down below. I do have unboxing videos. If you want to watch an unboxing for the club, I just wanted to put up my finished video before I forgot. And this time, of course, I had plenty of yarn cause we got two in the purple and one in the pink. And so I used up almost all of the yarn to finish it. And so, yeah, I think if I was going to do it again, I might make this purple section longer um, because I think with the pink at the bottom, it kind of gives the optical illusion that this section is much shorter than this section because the purple goes up into the ribbing. So maybe to make it a little more symmetrical because I had a little bit of yarn left, I might have done like two more rounds maybe of just plain rounds of the purple and then added the pink um, border just as like hindsight. So if you're still in the middle of making it, you might want to do that because if you push it this way, it's the purple section is pretty much the same. Like I said, I think I added an extra row here than I did here. So I probably did make this section a little bit longer, but I would probably number one, not make that mistake and then add more here just to kind of give it more of an even feel. I think would be the only thing I would modify if you're in the middle of making it you might want to just add some extra purple here before you put the pink on and when you're wearing it you'd never see it in a million years so it would all be bunched up and super cute so yeah so if you're still working on it just keep that in mind if you haven't hit your bottom edge yet maybe to add maybe to use up the rest of the purple if you have some left um, before you put the pink on and then I think Kelly, even in her pattern, said she even made um, the ribbing a little bit longer to use up more of this on the bottom. Um, I don't think I did. I think I kept them pretty similar in width. I think I did. So you can actually use a little bit more of this on the bottom if you want to, too, to use up even more. So a really good use of yarn, really cute project. 
and I really love her club. So that's it, you guys, before I keep rambling. Um, I really enjoyed the yarn, too, which, again, was the Coeur d'Alene Superwash Merino. It was really fun to work with. It didn't split. It's very um, springy. It's soft. You know, it'd be good to wear around the neck, um, which is why it's so great for a cowl. Out of all the projects, out of six projects, I made the four out of the six so far. And I would have made five out of six, except for one I had to rip out. And the only other one that I didn't make was for a shawl, but I'm saving that because it is a more of a, um, it's more of a spring shawl. It's more of a spring yarn and more of like a spring summer yarn and more of a pattern spring, a lighter shawl. So I was going to save that to make later. So that's the only reason I didn't make it. So all right, you guys, I hope everybody is doing well and I will talk to you later. Bye.